Hello, Algebra 2 students. This is a lecture on the vertical motion model. The vertical motion model is going to be a very specific formula that we are going to use to model the height of an object over time. Uh, this is going to be a quadratic equation. I know that this doesn't have y and x like we're used to. Remember, quadratics are written y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is essentially what we have here. Um, for the vertical motion model, it's h equals negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. And essentially what we're modeling is we have an object and it's going to be propelled through the air and we are modeling how high it goes as our y value. Our, h, our y value is going to be height and our x value is going to be time. So if the object is starting from the ground and is moving upward, it's going to go up in the air and then it's going to come back down to the ground. Now this can be modeled using a parabola. Notice it's an upside down parabola, that's why our a value is negative. It's gonna go up in the air, come back down, or we might be like jumping off of a cliff. Then we would be up here, we would go up in the air and then come back down like this, still making a, you know, a part of a parabola. In our equation, each of these letters is going to represent something. H is gonna be the height. The height, of course, is the thing that's changing in the Y. T is going to be our time, moving left to right, that's like our X. V is going to be the initial velocity by which our object is propelled by. And S is the starting height. Obviously, if the starting height, if, the, if it's this little one here that we're modeling, that would be a starting height of zero. This one would not have a starting height of zero, it's starting way up there. There are going to be a couple of things that I ask for you to identify. One of those things is you might be asked to find uh, when the object reaches its maximum height. So that would be the x value at the maximum height, the x value at the maximum height, okay? We have a way to find the vertex. Remember, when we were asked to find the vertex in 4.1, this is in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. To find the vertex, you do negative b divided by two times a. Uh, that is going to give you how long it takes an object to reach its maximum height. If my question is, what is the maximum height that the object reaches, then you need to do negative b over 2a and plug that in, because essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the vertex. The x value of the vertex is going to be how long it takes the object to reach its maximum height. And the y value of the vertex is going to be what that maximum height actually is. Another thing that you might be asked to find is how long it takes to get to a certain height. So I might say, hey, uh, how long does it take to get to a height of 50 feet? Then you would have to plug in 50 for h and find t. Uh, the most common thing that I would ask at a certain height would be, how long does it take to get to a height of zero? Or said differently, how long does it take to get to the ground? So then you would plug zero in for H here, and you would solve for T. Typically, you would use the quadratic formula to solve that. So let's go through, I have an example that I'm gonna try, and then I've got an example for you to pause it and try, and then I'll go over it afterwards. Uh, it should be pretty short. So in this example, we have a toy rocket that is going to be launched vertically upward from the ground. So even though it doesn't give us a value there, we should know that the ground, it's starting at zero. With an initial height of 128 feet per second, here's the equation, right? Negative 16 T squared plus 128 T, that's our initial velocity. And it's starting at a ground level, of, at ground level, so that plus S is just gonna be plus zero, or we don't need to write it. So first question is, how long did it take to reach the ground? I wanna know when its height was zero. So you would plug zero in for h of t, so you'd have zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 128 t, and you would need to solve this. Now, throughout this chapter, we've gone through multiple different ways to solve these quadratics, but when you're using the vertical motion model, because oftentimes the numbers are not nice, and our first term is negative and a large number, I'm just going to pretty much use the quadratic formula. 
That isn't to say that other methods wouldn't work, it's just my personal preference. So I'm gonna use the quadratic formula on this problem here. My A is negative 16 and my B is 128. I know the, the quadratic formula is negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So I need to start plugging stuff in. Negative 128 plus or minus the square root of 128 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 0, right? C is 0. All over 2 times negative 16. Carrying on, negative 128 plus or minus. Well, what I've instructed you guys to do is forget about the root, write the root here, but just type this into your calculator. However, you're going to find uh, something pretty, well, 128 squared minus, you know, 4 times negative, negative 4 times negative 16 times 0 is just going to be 0, right? So it's 128 squared. 128 squared is 1, 6, 3, 8, 4 over negative 32. And we are carrying on with this. Uh, when you type in the square root of 16384, it's just 128. So we have negative 128 plus or minus 128 over negative 32. You're going to have to do this twice, right? Negative 128 plus 128 is 0, and 0 over negative 32 is 0. And negative 128 minus 128 is negative 256 and divide that by negative 32. I'm just using my calculator here to answer these questions, right? So uh, when you do negative 128 minus 128, enter, and then divide that by negative 32, you would get eight. So we've got two answers here. We're gonna have to interpret which one makes sense. So here's our situation. A toy rocket is launched from the ground. It go at 128 feet per second. It goes up in the air and gravity is gonna pull it back down. How long did it take for it to reach the ground? Well, which one makes sense? Zero seconds or eight seconds? One of these we already knew, right? We already knew that it was at the ground at zero seconds. It said that it's being launched from the ground. So yes, that is a true sentence, that, a true statement that zero, it's at the ground level at zero, but how long did it take for it to reach the ground uh, would be eight seconds. Make sure you are putting uh, your, you know, your units afterwards, eight seconds it took for this object to reach the ground. All of that work was just for part A. So let's carry this on. Um, I have a feeling I've got more to delete, there we go. Okay, part B, after how many seconds, so T is still gonna be the unknown because it's asking about seconds, Will the rocket be 120, 112 feet above the ground? 112 feet above the ground when the rocket is at, that's H. So if we go back up here, what it's telling us to do is plug in 112 here and then solve for T. Because remember, H is the object's height and it's saying the object's height is 112 find seconds. And so now this is something that we have to solve. And when you're asked to solve this equation, remember the quadratic formula needs to have zero on the left side. So you're gonna just subtract 112 over, so you have zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 128 t minus 112. And you're gonna to have to do this all again, right? The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I start plugging stuff in. Negative 128 plus or minus the square root of 128 squared minus 4 times negative 16. This time our c value has changed to negative 112 all over 2 times negative 16. Remember, type in this whole thing underneath the root into your calculator. Just keep the root. Don't don't deal with the root yet. Deal with that in the next step. So 128 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times negative 112. 
I typed mine in wrong. 128 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times negative 112 is 9216. All over 2 times negative 16 And then we will type in the square root of 9216 into our calculator. So we would have negative 128 plus or minus whatever the square root of 9216 is over negative 32. And the square root of 9216 is 96. Now is when we break it up and do this problem twice. Negative 128 plus 96 over negative 32 and negative 128 minus 96 over negative 32. Negative 128 plus 96 equals negative 32. Divide that by negative 32, you're going to get 1. And now do this other half. Negative 128 minus 96 equals negative 224. Divide that by negative 32, you get 7. After how many seconds will the rocket be 112 feet above the ground? So we end up with two answers, one and seven. How do we interpret that? Why did we get two answers? Well, let's go back to our graph. Remember, we are launching from the ground, we are going up, and then we're coming back down. So what this is saying is at one second, we're 112 feet above the ground. And then it goes up, and then it comes back at seven seconds, and it's 112 feet above the ground. So this question is pretty ambiguous. After how many seconds will the rocket be 112 feet above the ground? Well, once at one second and seven seconds, the rocket will be 112 feet above the ground. They're probably asking for this one second one, but I would just write both of them if, the, if I was answering this question, because uh, it's going up at 112, and then on its descent, it reaches 112 feet above the ground again. So that is through part B. Next, it's asking how long will it take to reach its maximum height? So we know, obviously, the height of this rocket. It's going up. It's coming back down. Somewhere in the middle here, between one and seven seconds, it's going to reach its maximum height. How do we actually find that maximum height? Well, we have our formula. I'm going to go ahead and erase this all again. This shouldn't be negative 1 or positive 112 anymore. We don't care about when it's 112 feet above the ground. Uh, we want to know when this function reaches its maximum height. To find maximum height, you're finding the vertex. And remember, to find when an object reaches its vertex, that is negative b over 2a. Negative 128 over negative 32, essentially, right? Because 128 goes in for B, and 2 times negative 16 gives us negative 32. Negative 128 divided by negative 32 gives us 4. So how long does the object take to reach its maximum height? That would be 4 seconds. Now, to find the maximum height, this is essentially, this is the vertex, right? It's up here, and it's 4 comma something. We don't know what that something is, so just plug 4 into the equation, and that will tell you what that maximum height is. So if you plug in 4 into the t, so you'd have negative 16 times 4 squared plus 128 times 4. That would give us our answer. Negative 16, 4 squared plus 128 times 4. 256, and this is in feet, because that's asking what is its maximum height. So a rocket launches from the ground. At one second, it reaches a height of 112 feet. At four seconds, it reaches its maximum height of 256 feet. On its descent, at seven seconds, it's at 112 feet again. And then uh, it reaches the ground level at eight seconds. So this, we've learned a lot about this particular example, uh, and this would be basically everything that I could potentially ask you uh, on the vertical motion model. 
Let's look at one more example. I'm asking for less here. I'm only picking two of those questions. This would be a great place for you to pause it and try this example and then play it and go over and see how you did. So remember our vertical motion model is h equals negative 16 t squared plus b t plus s. We're going to be given this information. A diver is standing on a platform 24 feet above the pool. So its initial height is 24. And it, the diver is jumping with an initial upward velocity of 8 feet per second. Boom, we've written the equation. What is the maximum height the diver reached? So I'm going to quick draw this out just so we do have a, like a little illustration. I would suggest doing this a lot. So we are starting up here at 24 feet. We're going to jump up in the air, right? And then we're going to come back down, kind of like that. What is the maximum height the diver reached? Well, I want to know what the y value is at that point. Obviously, we're going to use negative v over 2a. That's what tells us where the vertex is, and then we plug in that answer to get our vertex, right? So negative b over 2 times a, negative 8 over 2 times negative 16. And negative 8 over negative 32 would just be 1 fourth. So at a quarter of a second, our diver has reached their maximum height. But what is that maximum height? Well, we have to take a quarter and plug it in for t and t here to get our answer. So we'd have negative 16 times 0.25 squared plus 8 times 0.25 plus 24. Calculator should be able to do all that in one line. And what I found out when I typed that in was I got 25. So what is the maximum height the diver reached? 25 feet. So they jumped one foot above their initial height, right? Because we're starting at 24. So a quarter of a second later, we were at our maximum height of 25 feet. Part B to this question says, how long did it take the diver to hit the ground? So we're still using our vertical motion model but we want to know when its height is zero. So we're going to plug zero in for h. So we would have zero is equal to negative 16 t squared plus b, no, nope, not v, we know v, 8t plus 24. And we're going to solve this, and we're going to have to use the quadratic formula to do so. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 24, all over 2 times negative 16. Negative, oh boy, negative 8 plus or minus the square root of, remember, type this into your calculator now, 8 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 24, and I got 1,600 over negative 32. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 1600 would be 40. And then we are going to have to split this up into two problems. Negative 8 plus 40 is, is 32, and 32 over negative 32 is negative 1. Or we do negative 8 minus 40 and divide that by negative 32, and we get 1.5. So our answer is either going to be negative 1 or 1.5, and we're going to have to interpret this. But first, I want to ask, why did we get two answers? We are just solving this quadratic, right? In this quadratic, yes, it goes like this, but if we were to actually not apply it to a real-world problem, the quadratic would still go like this, right? So what we got is we got this answer at 1.5 and this answer at negative 1. That's why we got two numbers here. Now, obviously, it doesn't make sense that the diver will reach the ground in negative 1 seconds. So 1.5 is going to be our answer. Make sure you write it as 1.5 seconds. So that's what I have for the vertical motion model. I urge you to ask me any questions if you have them. Uh, and we can go over more examples. There is a worksheet on Schoology. Uh, good luck.